Okay. So I'm going to tell you how I discovered the one thing. And then we're going to talk through this one thing. So let's go with my story. So when um, I first started, I'm so excited for this. Good. I'm so glad you're here. When I first started, um, well, I was a middle school English teacher in a school that I started to help teachers. So one of the first things that really called me out of the classroom was this um, work that I was doing with a fifth grade team. We were all implementing a new reading curriculum and I was helping the new, the fifth grade team. And I still was full-time teaching, like, like Lisa was just saying, I was already doing this, but it wasn't my full-time thing. So I found myself with like one foot out the door, standing in my classroom, almost literally, literally sometimes when they would come and see me while I had a group of students and I was like, I've got to teach right now. But it was this thing where I felt this call to like, kind of get out of my classroom and go and help teachers. And that was like my first real thing where I was like, gosh, I, I think this is something I want to do. And then I remember having that moment, that moment of being like, I want to do this. This is what I want to do. I want to help teachers. And that was so powerful. So I felt called to make this bigger impact, but the opportunity wasn't at the school that I was at. So I moved to a new school. And the opportunity that was there, oh, let me back up a little bit. Before I even moved to a new school, I did what you guys are doing, which is I went online and I found my people. I found other um, other people who were interested in helping teachers. And it was specifically ed tech coaching at the time. And we connected on Twitter and then we like got on Voxer. And so we were talking all the time about this work. And I was so drawn to what they were telling me that they were doing. And I was like, I want to do that. I want to get out of the classroom. I want to go do that work. And it was so exciting to kind of think of that as an opportunity. And so then I moved to a new school and was able to take on um, an, a position as an academic technology coordinator. So this is me, I'm gonna make it full screen. This is me my first year as a coach and um, I thought that I would really be able to just dive right in to this full time coaching thing, working with teachers and doing all this work. But I actually found myself in this particular situation surrounded by computers and um, imaging them and helping with and not really doing coaching, but doing a lot more um, IT work really is what it was that first year. And I felt like, oh, my goodness, I just can't th get this thing going. And then that first year, they asked me to do to lead some work around the technology standards. And I thought that would be so exciting. Like, of course, and I had all these ideas that we could do with the technology standards. Well, we could, we could, um, you know, bring in this project and do project based learning. And we, there are millions of ideas and we could have Chromebooks or we could use iPads. I mean, a million ideas. And I was bringing them in. And everyone was a little bit like, um, you're gonna need to slow down. And I was like, Okay, but we have so many things we could do, right? So I was so excited. And that excitement that you are feeling is something that is going to stay with you. This, this, there are there's so much potential and things that you can do. Well, it wasn't long before in my process, I ended up hitting a really big brick wall. And that was this idea of new things that I was bringing into the school, even though the administration was trying to bring it in as well. This resistance that I got was, well, it was basically blow up in your face type of resistance. And I was a little new and a little fresh. And I was a little like, what just happened? I had a second grade teacher blow up at me in a PLC meeting about iPads in second grade classrooms. And I was like, what just happened? And so that big brick wall that I hit of resistance, not only to that one teacher, but several others along this particular journey, um, led me to start wondering, well, wait a second, what's going on here? Wh why am I getting such pushback? I mean, this is great stuff and it's really important. It's research-based and, and we should do it. And, and you, I could show you all the articles in the books that have to do with it. Why? Why am I getting so much resistance? That was a really important question that led me to really dive in deep, really step back and think about what is it that is causing this type of reaction? And as a new coach, I am, I'm wanting you to think about this because in a minute, we're going to talk about the different change initiatives that you might have going at your school. 
and what emotions they might bring up. So I started like looking back and I was like, okay, what could I do here? I started researching. I started reading about leadership. I went to this amazing leadership conference in Atlanta and had like some amazing aha moments. And I read another book and I, and I, and I dove into some of the business literature. And then I read more about educational leadership and I just kind of dove in and I was trying to figure out what is going on here? Why are they, is it me? Right. The first reaction is, is it me? It's me. They hate me. <laughs> the tears came. Right. So the first thing to do is, is think that it's you. It's you. Well, there is an element of that. Like there always is an element of being self-reflective and being like, well, is this me? I mean, I could do better. Right. So that was my first real aha moment was like, OK, maybe I did it wrong right? Maybe I need to improve. And I did need to improve. It was my first year. I didn't know what I was doing. I just thought these ideas were great. I did need to learn how to influence people, how to lead and how to do it in a way that was going to actually bring somebody along. But there was more to it than that. And all of the books started to show me what it was that I was trying to get to. And this was my big aha moment. Um, after doing this work. So this is the statement that really started to open it up <laughs> to me. I, I was just laughing at ugly crying is therapeutic because it is, friend, it is. So what you discovered when you dive in is that the brain does not like change. It is just a truth of brain science and you can do your own research to find out, but the brain does not like change. But here's the thing, friends, you are a change agent. Did you not just say that the reason that you want to come out of the classroom is to help teachers grow? Hmm. If you're growing, you're changing. There's no way around it. So if the brain doesn't like change, but your job is to help people change, then we're going to run into the big brick wall of resistance pretty quickly, right? So this was the realization that I had. You are a catalyst for change at your school, but change is the thing that people are resisting. So let me read you this quote from one of the books that I read that really, really helped me understand the brain science behind this. It's a book called Quiet Leadership by David Rock. And it says, bear in mind that our brain is a finely tuned machine dedicated to protecting the status quo and trying new ways of thinking or behaving can send alarm bells ringing, even bringing on the fight or flight response complete with an adrenaline rush. So this is what's happening in the brains of our teachers when they are asked to change. This is crazy. This is what's happening. They are having alarm bells ringing and they're like internally having a fight or flight response to this request. It doesn't matter how big or how small it is. This request, this, these things that are you helping them grow and you helping them change are going to provoke these types of responses because of the way that the brain works. The brain really wants to keep everything like super status quo and they want, and the brain wants everything to be on autopilot. And so if it can't be on autopilot, then it means it has to attend and put a lot of attention towards something and that uses power and the brain doesn't like using its power. And so that's what I learned in some of this um, research that I did. And it started to lead me to realizing this one thing that I'm sharing with you tonight. So I realized kind of a twofold thing. I realized that I needed to reflect and think about how my approach was. And I needed to learn a little bit more about leadership and a little bit more about coaching. But I also needed to realize that change is the real enemy that I am battling against. And so this is um, my slide for change is the real enemy. And we are going to go a little bit deeper into the Star Wars metaphor here in a minute. But change is the real enemy is one of the most important things that I came to as my aha moment conclusion to start to discover this one thing that why are they resisting? Why is it so difficult for teachers to get on board with these things? Why? What's going on? Oh, 
change is the real enemy. Change. That was an aha moment for me. And so what I um, realized in this process is that emotions really run high with this thing called change. And so that means that we are coaches. Our job is to help people grow and change. Whether or not they gave you a job description, that is the real core of your work. And so that means that just by doing your work, you're going to evoke these emotions, excitement, fear, anxiety, stress, questions about what if and questions about how. So this is an important realization for you to realize that like it's not you, but you've got to think about how you're going to go into this situation knowing that this is what happens and that responses to change are very, very strong. So friends, the one thing that um, we're working on here, the one thing you can't expect teachers to change. And the real one thing is that you have to coach teachers through change. So what we're going to talk about tonight is how you are thinking about coaching teachers through change. So before we keep going here, though, let's make this a little more practical. In the comments, I want you to think about, I'm sure there's more than one, but at least one thing that your teachers are going to be asked to change this year. Okay, is it a new curriculum? Is it some other um, implementation or initiative? Is it, I mean, just the just a basic procedure that they're being asked to do. What are some things that you can go ahead and anticipate that you're going to run into as a coach that are going to fire up these emotions for teachers and cause them for to have a fight or flight response to these things? So I think that that might be a great way for us to just get our head around this a little bit and say like, okay, so I have to coach teacher, teachers through change. Well, what is the change that is being asked of them? I love this. Okay, Casey says increased student engagement, um, new assessments, increased data collection. Hey, Andrea, how are you? Okay, uh, Teresa says increased student engagement, blended learning, teacher binders, something simple. Ooh, switching to standards-based grading. Coach teachers through change on this one. <laughs> new curriculum and guided math groups, new curriculum, new evaluations, new coaching positions, so much change. New lesson plan templates, new annotations are required, new phonics curriculum, new platform for collecting data, new incentives, too many new incentives. Um, Switching, that was Amanda. Hey, Amanda. Uh, switching to science of reading instructional strategies. This is another big one. Coach teachers through this change. Uh, monthly PLCs, going back to the classroom, project based assessment. Yes, like coming out of virtual teaching and going in back into the classroom. PLC structure, EIPs for every student. Like, y'all know that this is going to be a core part of your work here. Shifting to conceptual mathematics instruction. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. These are so important for us to anchor to and to realize that these are the things that are going to be the things that evoke emotions in your teachers. And what it does is it makes us think about how are we going to help them. And so if the one thing here is that we have to, as I'm starting to reveal it to you, like the one thing that you need to know as a new instructional coach that they didn't tell you is that your job is actually to coach teachers through change. And the thing that happens here is that somehow, some way, you get told that you can just and it's not really like they say it out loud, but it's just implied. You can just tell teachers to change. Like if they, if you tell them, then they'll do it. That, that doesn't, that doesn't work. 
nope, it doesn't work. <laughs> so instead, we have to go with the one thing and the thing that you have to start getting your mind around and that you have to coach teachers through change. So how do you do that? So I have a little metaphor for us. I hope it's a kind of a fun thing. So if you're a Star Wars fan, I'm going to need you to like let me know so that I know I have some Star Wars fans out there. So give me a hashtag Star Wars. And we can have a debate later about which Star Wars is the best. And maybe you can recommend to the rest of the group, like if they were going to start Star Wars and they've never watched it before. Yes, there are some out there who've never seen it. What would you recommend they start with? That's a big question. You don't have to go there tonight, but just in case. All right. So I have some thoughts here that I am going to um, walk you through with um, the idea of Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader. So I'm going to go back here second. Um, let me go back. So if change is the enemy and we have our Darth Vader up here and he is the real enemy, I really want to just kind of come around this thing of, okay, let's look at Darth Vader. Let's look at how does, how do you change somebody who is resisting or also known as unchangeable. Well, it's so funny when you think about this story, if you know it, um, Darth Vader is the, you know, the most evil enemy in the planet, on the planet, and him and the emperor. And um, he's just completely unchangeable. But through those series of three movies, Luke kind of coaches him through some change. And ultimately, by the end of these movies, he transforms. And so it really made me think about this idea of how did Luke do this? Well, I'm going to tell you how he started trying to do it. Okay. So, so Luke started trying to uh, transform Darth Vader by fighting. That was his first uh, approach to helping Darth Vader <laughs> and getting him to change was to go ahead and battle him and in a lightsaber duel. Right. But he ends up losing an arm. Friends, I'm thinking you don't want to try to fight um, your resistant teachers and come on with the lightsaber duel against them because you might lose an arm. <laughs> so instead, you might want to take on um, a more mature approach that Luke brings to the table. And this is in uh, the second movie, Empire Strikes Back. But in the third movie, um, Luke comes into this whole situation with a whole new approach. He really is very much matured in this transformation between movie two and movie three. And now he is, I'm going to make this bigger so you can see it. Now he's going to come to Darth Vader with a totally different approach. Yeah, if you have a favorite quote, definitely drop it. Um, and he's going to come to Darth Vader with a totally different approach. Instead of fighting against him, he's completely passive. He gives up his lightsaber and he says to Darth Vader, you were once Anakin Skywalker, my father. It is the name of your true self. You've only forgotten. I know there is good in you. The emperor hasn't driven it from you fully. He approaches this star, this, um, this, fight against Darth Vader to get him to transform and change a whole different way calmly and he appeals to Darth Vader's ident identity and then come the last thing that Luke tries to do is he evokes the emotions in the last scene when Darth Vader totally transforms and turns against the, en the uh, emperor is when Luke says father please help and he's being electrocuted <laughs> So I just thought back on like, okay, well, well, how in the world would somebody like Darth Vader ever change? It's unchangeable. But Luke tried and then he succeeded in helping Darth Vader change. So change is not actually impossible, even for our most resistant teachers. And so we might want to, though, think about our approach. How do we need to come into this? Do we want to fight? with lightsabers and get our arms cut off? <laughs> or do we want to come in with a more mature and calm approach that's going to appeal to a teacher's identity and who she is and a teacher's emotions and what she 
needs and, and really why a teacher became a teacher. So these are some of the things that made me think of. Amanda says, not only will you lose your arm, but you'll also walk away exhausted and feel defeated. We can do better than that. We can come in a different way. Approach is everything, Jennifer says. Thank you for jumping in on that. So these are a few things that I got. Um, I'm totally putting a picture of Star Wars in my office or planner. What a fun reminder to never give up and see the good in everyone while reflecting on our own practices. Okay, good. I'm glad that this hit home because I'm a Star Wars nerd and I didn't know if everybody else would get it. So I'm glad to hear that it um, was helpful for you. So here's a couple of things we want to take away from this uh, metaphor with Luke Skywalker and his transformation. This is little picture. It's hard to see, but it's when he takes off Darth Vader's mask and he finally gets to see his father. And so Jedi coaching trip that we can use. Seeing the good in people is a huge part of what we need to do as we're coaching people through change. Believing that change is possible for everyone and anyone. If Darth Vader can change, then anyone can if we do the steps of supporting them. And so that's why we're going to talk about breaking down the change and coaching people's emotions, because those pieces will really help you as you are going into this environment of hostile attack, because people don't want change, you will need to know how to respond with some of these um, Jedi tricks in your back pocket. So um, I get it, even though I never watched Star Wars. Good. I'm so glad you're with me. Okay. So great reminders. Here are some of the things that I put up here, but I want us to talk about this idea of break down the change. And then Casey is going to come on in just a second. And we're going to talk a little bit more practically about how we have coached teachers through change. She's going to tell you her story along the way. But um, this was my slide for this. And here is actually want to show you this. Okay, I just moved. This is a bag of Legos. I just recently moved and my boys were not really like into the Lego thing. I have a 10 year old and a seven year old. And so when we moved, I just put all the Legos in like a box. It's like a slide under the bed type of box. And I found a couple of these bags, like unopened. Here they are, bags of Legos. And I was like, well, guys. And so then all of a sudden, like a couple weeks ago, I think my mom came and bought them a Lego set. And now they're like all back into the Lego. So they took all the Legos out and all stuff and they found it. And they were like, mom, where's the directions? I was like, it says six. I don't know. What does that mean? So this idea of breaking um, down the steps for teachers made me think of this bag of Legos. Because if I opened this up and dumped it on the table for you, what would you do? <laughs> you would be like, um, I can't build that. Yeah, you you would you would just be you would fight or flight, right? You'd be like, I'm out of here, or you'd be like, start getting mad at me. You're like, I can't build that, Allison. I don't have any directions. I don't have I don't even have a picture of what it's supposed to be at the end. I have no idea what this turns into. Like, no joke. I even try to look it up on the app, like. I'm sure I could figure it out, but I have no idea what this turns into. So if you poured it out in front of me, I would be lost. And so, you know, you could get creative with it. I love that. Zola says she would get creative with it. Absolutely. I'd love it. I love that. But what I think you would just be like is, okay, so you're going to give me the directions. Are you going to give me the step by step? And that is what it's like when teachers are faced with new change. When they're told to implement a new curriculum, it's like dumping Legos out in front of them and then being like, yeah, put it together. And they're like, but what is this supposed to look like on the, on the other side? Are you going to give me directions? And then I thought about Lego directions as I was looking at them with my kiddos. And look at these Lego directions, y'all. They are step by step, piece by piece, each individual piece, step by step by step. Y'all, this is what Lego directions look like. If someone handed you this bag of Legos and dumped it out in front of you, you would need directions to this level of detail to figure out what to do next. This is coaching. Love this? Do you love this? I love this. Okay, you like it. Okay, 
So this is coaching. Coaching is helping them with every single piece and then telling them where every single piece goes. And you know what? You are like this amazing runner. And so if I poured this out in front of you, just like, um, who was it? Zola said, oh, I would just build with it, right? Like you would probably be fine with it because you're cool with change and you're quick to just jump in there and build something. That is the way you respond. But everyone else is freaking out because you didn't give them the directions. And you can't give them every direction up front. That I mean, when you get these Lego booklets, they're like pages and pages and pages of directions. So it doesn't all happen at once. But as you think about coaching teachers through change, I want you to steal this Lego analogy and I want you to put some Legos in your office and I want you to think about how how can you break down the steps even smaller to help them through this change? Because part of the reason that change is so hard and the brain freaks out is because it doesn't know what to do. Like the unknown is what causes the brain to have this freak out moment. So I want to encourage you in this idea. Um, where did you get the random Lego bag from my kids box? But you can just go buy a box of Legos like one of those um, sets and they have the different bags. In them. So, okay. So, oh, okay. And Casey's going to remind me of this one. I'm going to let her also jump on, in on this too. It changes the goal. Progress is the win. Okay. Let's talk about how the Lego set is progress piece by piece. If you start helping them put this Lego set together, because it's a, it's a curriculum initiative or it's science of reading initiative, whatever it is, you help them put this Lego set together piece by piece by piece by piece, you're making progress. Every time you help them, you are making progress. And if change is your goal, if you want to build this whole Lego set, you've got to start with progress one piece at a time. And that's what happens when you get um, when you get down there with teachers in the muck and the mire and you don't just say, well, just do it. And not that you would say that, but you don't just imply here's your new curriculum. Just do it. Why don't you just do it? Instead, you coach them. You coach them through the change and help them with step by step. I find that we know to do this naturally with our students. We're good teachers, and that's why we came out of the classroom. So you're a runner teacher. You know how to break down the steps for students. But when it comes to working with adults, we tend to not break down those steps for them because we think they're adults. They should be able to do it, figure it out, whatever. And that's just not true. Adult learning needs as much step by step as student learning does. So keep this analogy in mind. I hope that it's helpful for you.